Hello all Denise users. Uh, this is Scott Hendrickson and I'm going to show you some work that I've done to expand the possibilities of Denise nearly infinitely. Um, okay, this is a system based on Node.js in some of my forum posts. I've mentioned that I've explored Node.js as the best way to get into Denise. And this is a visual Node.js editor called Node Red that's created by IBM. And it makes it incredibly easy, relatively, uh, to wire together a multitude of devices and services, email, Twitter, RSS feeds. Uh, save out the files, read files, just about anything you can imagine. And it makes the programming of it very simple. Now, there's also a whole other area that is the online aspect of Node-RED, which we'll look at here in a moment. But generally, I want you to see that this is a graphical editor where you're dragging in what is term nodes and you're wiring them together to perform whatever service that you desire. Now Denise is a little bit different in the sense that she needs to get an authentication key and then we need to somehow store that key and then we'll send her in this case just something to speak. This is just the most basic type of example uh, of something that we'll do and we're going to put a few delays in it because I'm also going to pop her up on the screen, have her speak her little thing, and then pop off the screen. Now this is hard-coded topic but I'll also show you how to do it from Twitter uh, and then I'll show you some of the other online stuff that you could do just with these basic examples. So what we're doing is we're using, um, I don't have it open at the moment, I guess. So let me get notepad. I'm using the, um, oh, pardon me, I'll, I'll grab it real quick. Her um, API for JavaScript, because pretty much everything's exposed through that. Um, let me see where it's at. Here it is. Okay, so yeah, this is her SDK, the next OS.js. So pretty much everything's exposed through that, and as well explained as you're going to find in any of the other Denise documentation. So I'm just using the simple agent speak here and then some of the um, maximize and minimize for the uh, agent on screen or whatever agent show that and the state. All right, so that's all I'm using from there. But there's a lot of other functions more than you could pretty much reach any other way. So, all right, let's just look at what happens here. Keep in mind this is a hard coded message in the payload text here. Payload is the output of the previous node and it's a JSON object. So, you're going to need to learn just a little bit about how uh, JavaScript in this case encodes JSON strings, which is a JavaScript object. All right. And the payload is what's coming from the other one. So I'm just going to have her speak. This is Denise from Node. And I have a series of delays so that she can perform her action. But let's just look at that. This is Denise from Node. Okay. So she just comes up on the screen. First she goes and gets her auth key. And right now she's doing it every time. Or this code's doing it every time. For her to get the auth key. And then store it in this variable. So 
to get the auth key you're just using this function that you get from there um, and then it's saving it as a global variable that I can use in other functions now I thought I could just chain this is an HTTP request object I thought I could just chain those together but it didn't quite work out that way and that's something I really want to do to eliminate some of the complexity of this system but it's really not that complex to begin with but as we start adding home automation and you know different device controls and all kinds of stuff it'll start to get pretty complex so inject is a trigger that's just for testing purposes I'm just using that where I can click this button and trigger it in actual code something else will trigger it whether that be an incoming message um, or a different state change of something so alright let's just look at the chain so she's coming in, she's getting her auth key. And then she's uh, going, actually this delay right here is not set up. That was just part of my test so I could get rid of that. Because she's going down, when I hit the button, it's getting the auth key, which is being stored. At the same time, it's triggering this chain, which is sending the payload text. And then I need to convert that text into this is a, a format called mustache which is basically just the payload with the uh, little braces around it and I need to do that because I need a string all right I, I need the output of a string and I was having trouble extracting that in a way that I could build a URL from so I just use this method here all right, and then I go into a delay where it wait, waits for three seconds so it gets time for her to get the key then she pops up on the screen and that's what this is the agent show maximized all right and then that feeds keep in mind this is the trigger so it triggers it comes down it goes here and then it fires off that request then she speaks right as she comes up then she, it delays for four seconds and then she goes away so this is minimized right there and how I encoded each one of these is to put the global variable that I created called payload and again you see this mustache format which is three braces and then payload and then three other braces and that is feeding from the key which is set here so see I'm reading that key and then that's the payload output of here so it's feeding it to there to fill, fill that variable then feeding here to fill the variable and then going through the delay and feeding the variable so you can see that it passes through the message passes through each time now you have uh, debug nodes that you can use to monitor what's happening and then you have a console and I'll, I'll show that in in another part here but anyway that is a really really s simple way as far as having to build code because I'm only putting in very little code most of its filled out by a form uh, just a few little transformations that you'd have to get used to but otherwise pretty darn simple so again having that inject I could also do a tweet um, set up a Twitter account that I'm monitoring so I'm going to switch over to the IBM Bluemix cloud all right and Bluemix is a series of services that's being offered by IBM and there's a free level where you can get quite a bit of stuff um, for free and then eventually you can move into a paid thing but this is very 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 powerful um, and in fact 
you have access to Watson. Now, Watson is really one of the smartest computers in the world right now. They, you know, you may have heard of Watson beating the top Jeopardy contestants and stuff like that and, and working on different medical cures and what have you. Watson is hugely powerful. And IBM has exposed some of the services of Watson uh, for use on the web, which is freaking awesome. So, let's look at what's going on here. I am monitoring all of the mentions of Donald Trump, at real Donald Trump. All of the direct messages that's being sent to him and his own tweets now there's a crazy amount of tweets going on so I'm actually in fact I'll show you the debug mode now so if I grab the debug here which see I'm looking at message payload so let me when you whenever you make your settings whenever you set something up here then you have to deploy it and as you deploy it, that's when it becomes active. So you make your change, then you deploy. So we're going to start seeing, let me clear this out. Um, and let's see what kind of, I don't, I shouldn't have much of a delay on that. Yeah, there we go. So see, now we have tweets are, that are coming in that are mentioning Donald Trump and uh, Donald Trump's tweets himself. Now I have this at a 20 second delay whereas if I remove that delay and took it down to oh let's just say two seconds because there's an amazing amount of activity around Donald Trump on Twitter as you would expect so you would just get message after message after message and where you, you eventually you're going to have to pay for the amount of bandwidth you use so you'd want to block that down but that is the over here you're seeing the actual contents of the tweets themselves right now let's stop that and I made a change, so I need to deploy. And now what we're going to do, and I'll clear out the debug here. Now what we're doing is we're running through a sentiment analysis. So this sentiment analysis, because I have a switch here going from negative 100 to 100. So negative 100 is very, very negative. I mean, it's really only... Uh, to 5 but I'll put to 10 I was just doing that as a test we'll put to 10 and so the IBM cloud service potentially Watson is going through and analyzing the content of the tweet and determining if it if it's of a negative nature or at which it signs a score below 0 or a positive sentiment where it gives it a score above zero and then I have this switch node here that's saying if it's between those then just pass it along now I could again limit other parts of that if I just wanted to see that range itself and then that's just going out to a message so what we're seeing along here is every two seconds we're getting an update of the tweet so neg very negative, kind of neutral, neutral, looking here, okay, negative, negative, or negative, positive, negative. Uh, so you're just getting a sentiment analysis of the tweet. So there's all kinds of interesting things you could do besides the tweets themselves. and I'm running this on the online platform but you could also run it inside of here and 
you know, then trigger Denise to say something or trigger Denise to only trigger at a certain value. Like say you were monitoring your own tweet stream and you wanted to know if somebody said something negative about you. All right. According to that sentiment analysis, you could do that. Anyway, that is just one example, but you have tons of stuff. Serial, web sockets, hit pretty much any API, um, just literally tons and tons of stuff. There's a lot of little plugins for it for Insteon and uh, Philips Hue, you know, a lot of different stuff. Wemo. Uh, there's just tons of stuff and you can e store this stuff in databases really easily too uh, to where you could archive everything you want or you could send it out to a text file so you can parse feeds that's coming in um, news feeds or weather and things like that I mean there's just I'm telling you it's limitless and the thing is, is that Denise is pretty darn good using this JavaScript API, I found. She sucks at everything else, I'm just going to be honest with you. she She's horrible at just about every freaking thing else, except for being a voice and a pretty face. So, that I found, in my experience, and I've only worked with her for a couple weeks, but... You know, I had as much as I could stand of her uh, abilities. And so I always knew from the beginning that I was going to supersede what she's done. And maybe in new releases, that'll change. But anyway, I wanted to share that with you. And we can uh, discuss more how to do it. But uh, Node.js, you'll have to install as well as Node.red. On Windows, it's a little bit harder. Um, I'm only going to help you do that very slightly because I don't have time to train you how to use your computer. Um, but I wanted to show you that this is a really, really powerful way to tap in to the possibilities of Denise using the combination of Node.js, Node-RED, and online services. Thanks for watching.